Uh, thanks, guys. Um, first and foremost, just the, a lot of text messages and Facebooking and everything that I received uh, a couple of weeks ago was out of, out of this world. So I thank everyone for the, uh, the thank you. But as I said then to the players, it's a players' game, so we uh, we get on with it. Um, thanks for coming along tonight, especially in you know, the hot weather. It's uh, been a bit of a stinker day. I aim to move through this fairly quickly, and as I always do, this uh, all the PowerPoint information I'm putting up tonight, there's a printout of it, so you can take it away and then digest it and read it, so everything we're talking about. So this one, the first one, is about Law 21.7. Happened in a couple of games that some of the umpires weren't sure about it, so I thought, OK, it's an opportunity to uh, raise it, especially when the ball hits a crack. The umpire shall call and signal no ball, uh, you know, which BC considers it been delivered without having previously touched bat or person of the striker, bounces more than once or rolls along the ground before it reaches the popping crease. More than once is how many, Dev? Two. Correct. So it bounces twice before it gets to the popping crease. It is a no ball, no matter what happens. Is that clear? Okay. Uh, pitches wholly or partially off the pitch is defined in laws. We know what happens if a pitch is wide off. Our, our cut pitch, what is it? Ten feet. Ten feet? Ten feet? What about metric? Uh, forget the non tur thing, that's, that's just straight out of the law. Um, ball becoming a rest in front of the striker's wicket. Now, I've never seen this in my career, but it, someone might have seen it, but it's part of the law. If a ball overly by the bowler comes to the rest in front of the line of the striker's wicket without having previously touched it, etc., etc. The umpire shall call and signal no ball and immediately call and signal dead ball. So he doesn't get a free hit at it. Okay? Just because it stops on the pitch for whatever reason. Never happens, I've never seen it. This one is about run out of the non striker. The old, I guess you used to call it the man cat, is no longer in vogue. It now comes under the run out law, uh, which is how it is. Now, I've done some uh, pictures there to show the arm, once the arm used to be the delivery strike, that no longer in vogue. It's the arm, what we call the perpendicular. So once it gets level with the ear up there, it's kind of too late. If he then de decides to not release the ball and tries to run out the non-striker who goes, he'll quickly signal dead ball because he can't do it. Okay? Not within the laws. So and you see the, the arm up there. Next one, please, Michael. You see this one, it's an unusual action, not quite level with his ear, but that's because of his action. But the, the hand is pointing where? To the sky? So that would be deemed as being in the perpendicular under the first one. It's exactly the same. That's a bit of an unusual, like, or maybe a Jeff Thompson sling type approach. Okay, next one, please. The bowling arm there has not got up to the perpendicular. If he pulls out of that, and the striker, non-striker is gone, and he hasn't got his arm up there, he can run the non-striker out. No longer do you have to give warnings under the law. If the batsmen don't know the law, don't understand it, well, let's hope they're watching the video and they pick up on it. You don't have to give a warning. So you might see a batsman, non-striker, um, go out of the crease a few times and balls in. Normally you might give them a bit of a warning. You no longer have to. It's a risk they take now and they should be watching the bowler's arm. And if the bowler gets up, once he gets up there, he can go. Okay? If you see that, one there, I didn't show the lead up. He didn't get his arm up, he's just run in. Where's the bat? Yeah. Is that out? Yeah. He'd be out. Yeah. Okay, just runs in. It's under the laws and the rules. So they're pretty, pretty straightforward. Like I said, you get a copy of these. Next one, please. Some points of clarification. Decision of the umpire at square leg. There's been some um, umpires not sure what they can or can't do at square leg. Well, you all know you do the basic ones, run outs, stump ends, those sort of things. They're pretty standard. Um, and, you know, you might signal to your mate whether you thought that was below the waist or a bit above the waist and trying to help. The same with over the shoulder. But either umpire can call and signal no ball at this level. Right? So if you see one go over, the batsman ducks and the bowler's end umpire's not sure because of that height and you're at square leg and you see you've got something, whether it's a fence, a tree or something, and it goes over that, you can call it signal no ball. What's the other thing that I haven't put up there that you can also call it square leg? Short run. Short run. So 
why wouldn't we allow square leg umpires to do anything else? If they see a no ball, there might be three behind <coughs> square leg. Keep your hands in front. All sorts of things, you can call a no ball. So I don't want the square leg umpire thinking, I can only do this and I can only do that. There's a lot more you can do. So that's why your concentration is paramount as long as it, it's um, the same set the bowlers in. Does that make sense? Is there any gap there should be between the yeah, I, I tend to think if it's just just over here, uh, and that standing up at that position, I, I don't think that's too bad because they can still play like back in Neil Murray's day, just looking for six would be a problem. Yeah, yeah, and once it gets up there, what you really got to, the way the best interpret it, can they play what's doing to be a normal cricket shot? So round about there, you could you could probably still hook it up there. And, it, and even if the batsman, let's say that one goes, you know, 18 inches, for example, over there, you should call it an no ball. If he gets a, an edge to it and gets caught, he's not out because it's gone where it should be. So we should be calling that. And if the batsman has a flick at it, gets an edge, and he's caught, well, then he'd be not out because you've called no ball. So you just need to get that distance right. Okay? Um, <coughs> the next one, the handbook rule 9.1. Um, we had a situation last match where there was a, an umpire who didn't quite know, couldn't find it in a hurry in the, in the handbook, and it is actually under Rule 9.1. <coughs> How many players do we need to constitute a match by our team? As it says there, can't be less than seven. Less than seven is how many? Half a dozen. So if they've only got six, that's when they'll forfeit, and they get a bit of time to do it. Unfortunately, there's a bit of an error last week, so just a reminder where everyone hasn't happened in a lot of games, might not happen, but sometimes things happen, and um, you just need to be aware of it. 2020 matches, who's up by out of 2020 this year? Out of all the hands that have gone up, who's made them put two catches in place in the first five overs? Because it happened in some 2020 matches. I don't understand why, it's not in the rules. You do not have to have catches in place in 2020 matches. Yet there's feedback that, that it happened. At least two games that uh, we're aware of. So just to reinforce, there's still tw plenty of 2020 games to go. Do not play, worry about catching positions. Okay, that's not required. Um, finishing time and two-day matches. Now, I had cause to get a pretty stern phone call from the VSDCA today. One game, first 11, finished at 3.14. 3.14 and our normal finishing time is 10 past 6. That's nearly three hours. Apart from the fact that we're getting paid, that we're doing half a day and walking away with our money, I don't think that's fair and right. And if the captains complain and want to call it off, you say under the rules, you're going to keep playing. Now if it gets to 20 to 5, I don't think that's such a bad idea if both captains want to give it away. It's within reason. You know, there might be 10 minutes for changeover but not 3.14, not 4.10, not 4.20. Anything past 4.30, I'll go, OK. If it gets to be like it's going to be on Friday, 41 degrees, and it gets to 3.14, they want to call it off, hot weather, I understand. There's special circumstances. But we can't, under a normal day's play, call off a game at 3.14. The captains want to get out of there. That, that might be what they want but you are in control of the match. They don't dictate what you do. You just have to politely say to the captain, I'm sorry, we have to play at least till five o'clock. And if it gets to 20 to five and they're sick of playing, you might say, are you done? We can go now. But be smart about it because, you know, the VSD are all over it. And we do get, we do get, um, I mean, I remember um, uh, Ken Fuster used to get up here and talk about soccer. And uh, I was talking to Neil today and there's, who else is it, Neil? Is baseball or...? Well, at Ormond, you know, the baseball club on the ground, on yeah. the second ground because the games are finishing early. So yeah. that's the thing. We, it's not just about our games. We, we've got custody of the overall competition yeah, here. Yeah, correct. And other sports are looking at the grounds we have and they're, and they're envious of them. So, you know, if we go early, we just are, we're just open yeah. to, any, to criticism on that. Yeah, sport. correct. See, the, the problem we've got, there's just not enough... We know there's not enough grounds around in, in Melbourne, um, football-wise, cricket-wise. And, and so everyone's looking for that piece of turf. So it's really important. So do that. Uh, I'd just like to congratulate Patrick Matthews, who's appointed to the best DCA in the country game. 
uh, on the 8th of uh, December. And uh, congratulations, Patrick, did an outstanding job. And um, he's, a, he's a young man on the rise, he's doing everything right, and, and the appointment was well deserved. And the feedback was that it was excellent. So I rang Patrick and told him that, and I'm delighted that uh, he went so well. Unfortunately, he couldn't get this this year across the line. Um, the next one is Ian Wyatt's been appointed to the VSDCA Crusaders under 21 match January 3rd, 4th, and 5th, 2020. So, uh, congratulations, Ian. And, um, I'm sure you'll, uh, you'll do yourself the VSDCA umpires and the VSDCA proud and, and well deserved. Ian's having a really good season and, and I'm fine pretty well, as, as a lot of you are. I just want to pass on some more feedback uh, before the next slide goes up. but. I've spoken to a number of captains, certainly at First Eleven, and they're telling me that they believe the umpire standard has really improved over the last 12 to 2 years, 12 months to 2 years. That's a credit to you guys. It really is. That, you know, you're doing everything right, you're working on your game, you're accepting the feedback. There's a lot of umpires I've run and spoken to and taken on the feedback. Unfortunately also, there's been three umpires the last couple of weeks that have been dropped back to the seconds um, because they, they're not performing quite as well as, as others. And there are umpires in the seconds that are umpiring really well and deserve an opportunity. And, um, and Neil and I have had a lot of chats about this. We talk most days. And, and I can make it quite categorical. I want you to all understand we don't care whether you're young, medium age, or in somebody's terms older. It doesn't reflect on us and how we go about our appointments. If you're doing the job, you're getting the good marks, you're going really well, the opportunities will come. So hang in there, be confident in your own abilities, do what you can, and remember, back your judgment, back yourself, back your knowledge of the rules and the laws, and, uh, and you'll stand yourself in good stead. The last one from me, Merry Christmas to all of you. I wish you all the very best. Come back safe and sound in 2020. Enjoy the night, enjoy Saturday, and have a safe Christmas to you and your family. Thank you. Um, we have a situation on Ray Effect Day earlier in the season. Where uh, 68 hours have involved, I'll make this brief. Uh, batting side, we had to call stunts. They had 330 runs in the scoreboard. And the captain asked us what were his opportunities in the following Saturday to maximise his chances of getting an outright. We couldn't find um, in the white book or in the rules of cricket, and that well, would be our pen and rules, we couldn't find an answer uh, to his query. He also asked us on the second day, after he bowled the side out for 30 overs, he said, I've got a new ball, but I don't want to take it straight away. What are my options? With, with both these scenarios, we, we couldn't find an answer in the whiteboard. Rather than hold up a meeting tonight, I just wanted to put this on notice. Could we get that codified next, next year? Sure. So You're talking about a two-day game? Yep, two-day game. A two-day game. When can they declare? When, when can they declare? Well, Brian, we were told that he declared on Saturday night, day one, the following week, instead of starting at 12.30, it would start at 1 and be an 8 over game. Correct. He said to us, hang on, what's happening next week? He said, well, you've got another 12 overs coming. We'll start at 12.30 and we'll go to 6.10. He said, but I want some of that time. I should be rewarded for what I've done in the books. Tell him if he wants to rewrite the rules, he can have the time. That's right. <laughs> well, Brian, Brian, I no, no, I'm, I'm trying to find the answer. I understand. Look, the book does cover it. Does it? And we, yeah. It does, and we went through it. I don't think you read the meeting, I'm not sure. Oh, we went through it. Well, if you can yeah. tell me where it is. Send me after the meeting, I'll show it to you. Okay, and the, and the one about the new ball? After 80 yeah. overs. After 80 overs? Do they have to take the new ball? No. 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 It's not compulsory. It's available after 80 overs. No, but he's saying at the start of the second inning. So, yeah. so if he's back in the old ball, he can't take a new ball to 80 overs. No. Correct. No. Correct. You can't, you can't just start with it. It's, look, too many of them watch test cricket and think they can just follow it. If they bowl 80 overs with the old ball and they want to keep going, then that's their ball for the match. That's it. You can't say bowl four or five overs and then we'll take the new ball. That's not how it works. It's an 80 yeah, overs I, inning. So I agree with that. But yeah. It's interesting that's not the ruling they got from you. You said that the ball will be changed. Law 4 doesn't say that. It says, either captain may ask for a new game. Yeah. No, I said that's the law of cricket. If you read the law, it's that's what it says. So the clarification is he either starts with a new ball or he continues with the old ball until it's 80 years old. Correct. Yeah. Thanks. Or a further 80 years old. 
Well, thanks, thanks, Rick. Right. Right.